Welcome, everyone. This is the Tabernacle Podcast. We are back with another episode. We are continuing our series uh, on our tent poles, our kind of our pillars of creating a culture, creating a worship culture. Um, we are the worship staff of Trinity Fellowship Church in Amarillo, Texas. My friend Stephen Ronk is at our North Campus. Uh, Talon, myself, and Phil are at the Hollywood Road Campus. And we're going to jump right into this thing. So we've got a clip here. Yeah. I'm very excited about this clip. Um, so two I'll weeks ago, I was leading. And we get up on stage, and Rito, who's band leading, fires the tracks. And it's just the loudest, like, static. Mm. <laughs> and it was really funny, because he, like, shuts the tracks off really quick. And uh, in the mic goes, I'm going to test the tracks. And I was like, OK. So he hits him again, and it was at that moment like it clicked, and I was like, oh, gosh, hmm. what's going on? So we kill the app real quick, open it back up, fire it again, and I was oh, like, no. oh, and we're at 30 seconds, probably less at this point. I bolt off stage, run to front of house, and halfway as I'm running back there, I'm like, what are you going back there for? You're not, they're not going to do anything. <laughs> this isn't like some magic setting. They're like, oh, shoot, sorry, I had the static setting on. We'll turn that off. And I get back there, and I'm like, it's just static. And they're like, you know, we're both just looking at each other. There's like 30 seconds left until service starts. I run back up, it's crazy. come up on stage. And here's what I'll tell you. This is what's amazing about this moment. Uh, prior to this, we had prayed, um, talking about inviting the Holy Spirit to infuse what we're doing you know we have a we have a limited amount of capacity a limited amount of ability asking the holy spirit to step in and do something miraculous above and beyond what we're capable of so we had prayed that whole i mean powerful time of prayer uh after rehearsal i look at julia who's standing right next to me and just in the most powerful way she looks at me and she goes come holy spirit and in that moment, I was like, yeah, we're doing this. I'm not worried about this. I'm not scared of this. Uh, and so we fire off. You know, we're swelling up. And we're like, okay, I don't, who's counting who? You <laughs> yeah. know, we never was stuck to even think about it. Yeah. And uh, so now you can play the clip. You can see me panicking in the background. Well, good morning, church family. Would you stand to your feet <laughs> with me? Welcome to church. It's good to see all of you here this morning. Welcome to everyone joining us online. We're just going to do it. Campus. We're just going to do it. We're excited to worship God this morning together. So as we do, let's just turn our hearts and our minds. Let's lift our voices to him because he's worthy of our praise. Father, we lift your name on high this morning. We lift our voice to you because you're worthy. In Jesus' name, let's worship together. Okay, so here's the count off. Yeah. My face shows it a lot though. <laughs> I'm thinking, that's my thinking face. I'm like, uh. <laughs> and, I'm like <laughs> and at that point I'm like, you know what? This thing's either gonna burn or it's gonna be fine. Those are the, uh, where's the click eyes? Uh-huh. No guide either. No, no yeah, guys. No, uh, uh, Rito had not. Wow. Rito didn't have his phone open because he was used to just get calling the changes. So we got to call the section. And so at some point in here, he got his phone out and opened up the roadmaps and had them going. Hmm. My wife told me after this that I need to stop chewing gum because hmm. I got very aggressive with the gum chewing. You're like, you're like, I got very ah, aggressive because I was so ah. nervous. Like Amanda Cook. Yeah, I was just like, I was going at it. <laughs> and uh, so we get into it and we go and you, you can see, because I've got several clips of us getting further and further in the set. And I start to loosen up as mm -hmm. the set goes on. And it actually was like super fun. Mm -hmm. It was a really fun time. Now, I'm not saying I want to do it a bunch. I don't want, I don't want to go no click, no tracks, no guide permanently but it was a very good reminder that it was like this is the lord's thing this sure. isn't your thing well uh, uh and how was the response after service did anyone even 
I, I'd be curious if anyone even noticed that, no that, one that, that was a, you know, a non-musician. No one knew. Um, wow. Yeah, I mean. Now, Daniel, you can, you know, Daniel heard when, when Rito fired the tracks, he heard the static through our in-ears. Oh, uh, What? And he was like, was that loud? are you guys okay? And I was like, I don't think so. And so as I was rushing around behind him, it, I think it affected him a little bit because he was thinking, like, are you guys going to start playing? Because <laughs> normally, for, for those of you who haven't tuned in, or like, usually we start playing as he's wrapping up his prayer. So we were obviously like, still like, who's, are you counting off? He had to look on his face. He had to look on his face, <laughs> look on his face. face for Do sure. Do I need to keep praying? <laughs> and so as we go through the set, I turn around. So the next song is Cornerstone. And I turn around and look at Jeff, and I'm like doing the old school, like, when I was in cover bands and when I was in my band, I was like, one, two, three, four. And we start the song. Right. And right. then did the same thing with Greater You Lord. Um, but it was it was full panic. And then somewhere in the, the set, it was like, no, this is actually really fun. Uh, but a very cool moment, too, was walking over. And the band and everybody that was up made that connection. They were like, oh, my gosh, we prayed. Mm-hmm. And we always pray before set, but this was a very specific prayer. This was a very specific kind of like, hey, we're going to intentionally, because I had been, I had given them this spiel that Don Potter gave, which is the, the anointing and then the Holy Spirit activating mm. the anointing. And so that was kind of part of our circle up time was like, hey, we're going to activate this anointing. We're going to activate the Holy Spirit. We're going to have the Holy Spirit step in and do the things that we can't. You know, your anointing or your preparedness kind of goes to a level, and then those moments where you're like, man, that was crazy, the Holy Spirit taking things up another notch. So this was one of those moments that we came over, and like Jeff, who, Jeff Marquez, like, poker face of all poker faces, just like, he was like, dude, that was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> if Jeff like, did that, that's a big like, deal. Jeff! <laughs> uh, but it was like he put like it was instant connection he was like dude we just I think, like we just prayed that yeah right. and i was like yeah and the production guys came up afterwards and they were like man that was nuts we thought that thing was going to fall apart wow well because like when's the last time we did a service without click or guide uh, or i mean i don't think i've ever played a full service at trinity fellowship with no click or guide you know certainly no like way back in the day uh, with just the click no, but, but no click or for the as whole set. far back as I can uh, remember in documented services all the way back to 2008 when we <laughs> were in that building. That's so crazy. We were still at least using a click. We didn't have wow. a, we didn't have a band. Like right, that. right. We were still using a click. 16 years. As a, I, I, so I, I cannot mm, yeah. outside of my band days playing in my right. band. Right. You know, we'd play at Daniel Davis's house with, you know, everything turned up to a thousand and there was no, <laughs> no click. click no click involved in that yeah but that's a perfect example that the, actually mentioning that is a perfect example because if you're going based off of your ability or what you have reference yeah. for the furthest back i can go is 20 years so there's not even like oh yeah we've done this before it's fine it's that big mm-hmm. deal not anybody <laughs> up there new, fresh yeah. we'll <laughs> there. it's such a testimony like you uh-huh. keep saying because we've been praying as a worship ministry for those you know people watching this aren't with us on a daily and god's really doing something fresh mm-hmm. in in our church and in our worship ministry um and there's a stirring that's happening right now that's really wonderful and so uh when we pray and we ask God, Lord, have your way, uh, <laughs> do we mean it? You know, and sure. I think this was an amazing thing where, okay, that was, that was, that static was Jesus at work answering our prayers and showing us just to the littlest thing, hey, uh, you can do this and mm-hmm. you can lean on me more than your machinery. You can lean on me more than your instruments, your devices. So it was just really cool I, I i actually wasn't up this this weekend but uh till texted me and was like bro <laughs> this was crazy <laughs> it's, it's it's i don't know it gets me excited well um, this was before we did first wednesday yes so the other thing that's really cool about this is we had leonard jones come in and play mm-hmm. with us for first wednesday and we had we had playback ready to go for 
that service. Now, we weren't using it a ton, but we still had click, sections, guide, all that kind of stuff. And this was like a little bit of a, uh, you know, it, set, it sowed the seed. Because uh -huh. when we got into rehearsal for the first Wednesday set, we eventually got to the point where we we're like, I'll just go only click, and I'll call the section. As I'm as I'm up there leading, and it was so fun. <laughs> it was so much fun to yeah. do it in that capacity where it's like, hey, the click's gonna run, and when we're done, we'll turn it off, and then we'll change to the next click. Can I tell you what it felt like? It was almost like turning off Siri on my GPS. Mm -hmm. You know, we we follow the blue line mm -hmm. so much these days when we're driving. It felt like turning turning it off and being like, let's go explore. Let's, let's, see where, let's, let's see drive around town. Let's yep. get out of town and see what's out there, uh, musically speaking, mm -hmm. worship speaking. So it was, it was awesome. Well, and even those moments, like we, we did praise, and we took praise in a very different, <laughs> well, we took it in a very geographical location. It felt very Texas. It's almost like, I, I keep making the joke, like my, my neck kept getting redder and redder <laughs> and redder <laughs> as the set went on. <laughs> Ain't nobody. Because it was like, it was, it was fun. But some of the fun was is that like, we would have had to normally using playback, come down to a section, giving each other the look, made sure that infinite loop is turned on. And then at some point there would still be the looming feeling of, okay, when are we turning this off and finishing the rest of the song? It was so fun to just be like, 38 minutes. How long? 38 minutes. We played praise for 38 minutes. <laughs> 38 a little minutes. bit of an intro there, but at, at, at 738, wow. I was like, we're moving wow. on to song two. It was unbelievable. <laughs> oh it was so, it was so fun because there was two for us, I think, as a band as well. There was true flexibility to come down and be like, I don't know how long we're going to hold the one. We'll hold the one till we're not holding the one. <laughs> Well, but then there would be like someone that would pop out, like Rita starts going off on a slap bass solo, or that, a fiddle solo, you know, there's, there's all sorts of like, just like people taking off, you know, on the one as you're just like mm -hmm. vamping there. And then all of a sudden that turns into a whole nother, you know, sure. ramp uh, to go off for another like five minutes. And it was so it was appropriate cool. was really because cool. when Phil was ready to start doing the bridge, then it was like, hey, we're doing the bridge now. Mm -hmm. There was no like formal call. There was no formal like. You started singing it. And you started, started singing and then you're like, oh, I'm playing the changes now. Mm -hmm. And it was fantastic. So that's our feel for today of, of the, the clip of the, the day. The track's was, dying. The track's dying. It was so yeah. fun. Like it was, it was so, it was so fun. In like a, that's so, that's awesome. In like a, an adrenaline junkie kind of way. Where yes. Like, I don't know if I necessarily want to roll the dice again on that, but that was like super fun. <laughs> like crisis management. Like, yeah, yeah. Ah, ah, well, when we what? got into the 11.15, it was like, Back to the track. Yeah. Like, <laughs> boring. Guys, can we go yeah. just back to click maybe? And the irony it's is so it, crazy to me that we're having this conversation right now. It's, I it's, do it's, I it's know. not something that, that I would have envisioned uh, happening, but I can see I can see where the appeal is though of like, you know, you know, I've done it this way for so long that it's kind of gotten it's maybe it's time for a fresh a fresh mm. uh, Well this is how you know fire. this this yeah. how you know the Lord's up to something is you both know, you know as well. I love tracks. I love the form factor. I love all of those things. Yeah. I like knowing where I'm going. Me too. I like an appropriate amount of counts. I like knowing that we do it this many times. Right. And for that to happen and it not put me in like an immediate pain cycle, and then on the other end of it be like, oh, there's actually, there's actually something really awesome here. Yeah, there's a, a valuable thing. That there's a valuable there. thing that we found <laughs> in it. <laughs> And I'm telling you, I don't know if a year ago, if that happens, I'm like, I don't think I want to work here. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to. That's not a Trinity thing. I'm just saying, like, uh, it would have put me in such a dark place sure. of being like, Who, what are we doing next? Who's calling what? You know? Sure, sure. And it was. Or we need to buy a second a redundant tracks rig <laughs> to, to make sure. That never four happens iPads again. and four tracks rigs just in case something goes down. That's we need to have all again. the infinite options. Mm. Yeah. To do it. And then, you know, for us to, to then, for it to trigger a first Wednesday to be like, we're just going to go click. And I texted Marco after first Wednesday was over and he was like, I think we should just only use click for first Wednesday from now on. What? Yeah. I was like, yeah. what wow. is 
happen. Wow. <laughs> it's true though. I mean, it really, it, it changes, you're right. Like, like it changes your sub, like the, the, the assumptions you're making. Yes, in your absolutely. Mind of like, okay, we, so we've got a limited amount of time. I don't want to miss the bridge call to go back in mm -hmm. after we've infinite looped a section or whatever. It just makes me think of that word in Psalm over and over, Sila. Mm -hmm. Like, what did that mean? What happened? What does it mean when it says the, the, the uh, musicians prophesied? Mm -hmm. You know, you just, when you start asking these questions, you're like, oh, wait a minute. And you know these guys were like players. Mm -hmm. Like they could shred on the wire. Yeah, right. <laughs> playing it skillfully. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Loot right. solo. <laughs> yeah. You know. Playing and professionally. I, yeah, and I think this is the, the Lord's leading us to like tap into that. Um, it's... It's, it's very, and, and, you know, that's why it's called prophetic worship, because it's, it reminds me so much and reminds a lot of people so much of the gift of prophecy, where there's a huge unknown factor, mm -hmm. where you're like, okay, I've prepared myself as a vessel, maybe I've even written some things down to deliver prophetic, encouraging, um, speaking God over people, his mind and heart over people, and direction, but like, there's an element of like, I don't know. Mm -hmm. And I think when we step into this musically, that's when we step into the prophetic as, as musicians. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's actually a very so good cool. segue into mm -hmm. what we're talking about. So we're discussing kind of, uh, I combine them because I think they go together very well, but it's excellence and accountability. So the excellence portion of that, the reason that's in there is that we are accountable to the amount of preparedness that we are putting in. So they're in preparedness. The more that you're prepared, the more excellent you can be. Mm -hmm. So we have a expectation of our musicians and of our team members to be prepared an appropriate amount for the service that they're in. Now, the reason I say that is there's an appropriate amount of excellence for hero land, which is like little, little, little kids. And then there's an appropriate amount of excellence for the weekend. I would never hold the hero land worship leader to the standard that we hold in the weekend because they're two very different things. And we that we have a we have a very churchy term called measured excellence, which is an appropriate amount of excellence for the venue that you're in. Mm. But in that preparedness lies the sneaky snake that is accountability that so many musicians, so many worship leaders, so many vocalists really wrestle with. Um, I don't know what it is, but it's like in the, it's like in the fabric. <laughs> you hurt of, my feelings. It's in the fabric of artisticness or, yeah. or, or the artistic nature is to take criticism so deeply personal. Yes. Um, which is so necessary because the reason why we take it so deeply personal is that we've got all this misplaced identity wrapped <laughs> up in that thing. So when someone says, hey, can you not play that? And you're like, what did you say? Are you saying I'm an awful person? You hate my parts? <laughs> yeah, you hate me, don't you? Like, what? I just you asked don't you not to play. You don't want me to succeed, do you? You're like, you're like, I'm asking you not to I, play the five. I just said, please stop strumming so hard. I knew you <laughs> hate <laughs> That's it. Yeah. That's it. Just, just gentle, gentle. It's strum. a quiet prayer moment, and you are ripping strum, the strings strum. apart. I'm just asking you to dial it down. You know what? I don't, think, sure you want, I don't think you want me here. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I don't know if I fit in here anymore. So we're joking around, <laughs> but also we've all had conversations like that too. It's also not too terribly far from the truth. Uh, we've all been on the receiving <laughs> end, and we've also also been the ones <laughs> oh, divvying it out yeah. to musicians around yep, us. It absolutely. is a very real thing, absolutely. and in it is not just oh I can take criticism well oh. I'm fine being accountable. The, the concept of accountability is so far reaching that to participate in accountability really is, it's a big commitment because you're, you mm -hmm. are in a lot of ways trusting a person across from you to say, yep. hey, I'm going to point some things out. It's in love, but I need you to like, I need you to go there with me. I need you to hear me. <laughs> I, I, I did this so poorly for so many years. Um, and I'm going to use a story to kind of set us up, and then we'll, we'll jump into this. So my second year of coming on as the music director, my boss at the time was a guy named Raymond Boyd. 
Raymond. Love you, Raymond. Raymond. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Um, Raymond was my boss. And prior to coming over and being the music director, I was the worship leader for the youth. Now, up to this point, I had had a very helpful, influential person in my life who still incredibly, like, paved the way for a lot of things that I'm doing in ministry. He's amazing. But one thing that he was doing that I don't think was terribly helpful is he kept, in, like, hey, you're a worship leader, you're a worship leader, you're a worship leader, you should be leading worship, you should lead. And I'm like, okay, yeah, I should be, absolutely. So Raymond comes to me one day and he's like, hey, I hired you to be a music director and you just start doing music director stuff. My gosh, you would have thought Raymond was talking about every uh, relative I've ever had and calling them <laughs> bad <laughs> things. <laughs> bad things. <laughs> it came up in me like nobody's business. I should have been fired. I really should have. I was not respectful. I was entitled. I was a brat. I threw a full-blown fit. What do you mean? I'm, I'm a worship leader. What, what, am, what am I supposed to do? I mean, just, and Raymond was like, hey, we found something. Because it, it should not have blown up the way that it did, but it did. So Raymond does what Raymond should have, and he runs it up the chain to Jimmy Witcher. So Jimmy Witcher has me come to his office, which at that point I'm like, I still am so clueless and still so entitled at this point that I'm not even like, I'm thinking, <laughs> this is so embarrassing. I'm going into it being like, I'm going to let Jimmy know. <laughs> God. We've all done it. I'm going to let Jimmy know that Raymond's using it incorrectly. And Jimmy so beautifully sits down with me. And he taught on this a couple, a couple months ago. But he wrote out who, what, where, why, and when on a piece of paper. I still have this piece of paper. It's 15 years old now at this point. I still have this piece of paper in my nightstand because it changed my life. He goes, there's only one question on here you're not allowed to ask. I was like, okay. And he's like, why? So he takes it off the board. He goes through. When God is dealing with our identity and God is dealing with our calling in life, these are questions we can ask. Who are you wanting me to be? Who are you to me? What am I supposed to be doing? What are you doing? Where am I supposed to go? Where are you in this? How am I supposed to do this? Um, how do I know that you're going to come through? Right? These are all appropriate questions, except for why. Why are you doing this? Why, why hast thou crushed me, O Lord? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> why hast thou forgotten me? Why have why you forsaken me? Yeah, you know? yeah. uh -huh. In my yeah. head, and, uh, uh, you know, why, are, mm. why is this person doing this? Why are you doing it? All of these things. He's like, that question doesn't, you don't get to ask that. And Jimmy so brilliantly went through and helped me unpack this huge issue that I had with misplaced identity. That My identity was all wrapped up in being a worship leader. And Jimmy didn't realize this, and I told him later on after, because he spoke on this, and I, t I told him this story. Um, and he just, you know, he was like, man, that's, I didn't even realize that. Like, Jimmy, this, like, this, like, changed my life. <laughs> Jimmy's like, like, I didn't even realize that. That's a Tuesday afternoon for yeah. me. Yeah, I mean. Yeah. But Jimmy had, had walked through it so many times with, him, with himself and with other people that he knew exactly what to do. This wasn't a, hey, don't ever talk to somebody like that again, because he knew that, that would just be adjusting the behavior. He got into what was the beginning of real accountability and real submission. Hey, mm -hmm. A, what you did is inappropriate. Can't do that again. But if we don't deal with the thing beneath the thing beneath the thing, mm -hmm. you're just going to keep doing this. And he loved me too much to let me continue spiraling out of control. Because mm -hmm. he knew what he was seeing was, you're not okay with accountability. You're not okay owning up to your end of the deal. And if I don't help you get to the bottom of this identity thing, you're going to bounce from job to job to job to job to job. Jimmy is very much invested in my family. He was very close with my dad. He worked for my dad. Um, very close with my family my, my entire life. Um, so he had this uh, additional kind of vested interest of like, I don't want to see somebody I love spin off here because accountability is hard. I can help you get on the other side of why accountability is so important. And why submission and, and the, the crushing of your ego is so important. Yeah. 
-hmm. So, um, will you read that off just because yeah, I don't sure. have my phone? Read that little excerpt that I sent you earlier today, of kind of summing up. That's really good. Uh, when you establish the values of a culture, how do you adhere to those values? What is the process for addressing situations that challenge those values? Confrontation is one area that a lot of worship volunteers can struggle with. How do you do, do it right and what is worth addressing? That's a good question. We'll come back to that one. <laughs> we strongly believe in accountability and healthy confrontation. In my Teal's younger days of playing at the church, I struggled with being prepared for services. I would wait until the last minute and went off and make up parts in place of the real parts. I didn't handle confrontation well at the time in my life. This resulted in, in me clashing with leaders because I was not submitted to the culture of accountability. We believe in upholding the values of submission, humility, and preparedness. If something crosses those values, then it's our responsibility as leaders to address it in a healthy and normal way. We will not shy away from accountability, and we will maintain unity no matter what. In my long history, the thing is never the thing. Usually buried beneath the thorny exterior of someone who doesn't like accountability is a deeper issue that needs to be pastored. Hmm. So that's, our, that's, that's kind of the, the summation of why accountability is so important, and it also helps pinpoint what we're trying to do in accountability. Accountability is not detective work. Uh, that's a huge deal. I'm not a detective. What does Prof say about it? Like, he says something like, so accountability is not me asking you, it's mm -hmm. you bringing, bringing Bingo. things, uh, being accountable and bringing things to the table. Yep. Not, yeah, not interrogating and pulling things out. But. So if I'm accountable to Ronk, it's not Ronk's job to check in on me period, like every single day and be like, hey, did you do that thing I told you not to do? Hey, did you, you know, what are you, what are you looking at? What are you doing? Who are you talking to? That's not, detect like, accountability is not detective work. I don't want to do that. That's not what I signed up for being a pastor is like investigating people's lives. We all know, and this is just how it works, is how it's worked in my life. Nobody really usually has to do detective work because if I'm up to no good, <laughs> it's going to find its way uh, to the right people. Uh, and so accountability is not detective work. Um, even the That's term. an important thing to, yeah, yeah. to mention, though. I mean, because of so many, you know, I know that there was a big controversy in the 70s, the shepherding movement, where uh, accountability was kind of an overreach. So mm -hmm. when people hear those words, you know, accountability or su submission, those kind of words to authority, they're like, ah, I don't know if I want to be, you know, every detail of my life being scrutinized. Um, but, the, my but the distinction that you yeah. made there yeah. of, of UPC. like mm -hmm. you bringing it to the table, it's not me um, reaching in and, and overstepping my bounds and micromanaging your life. It's actually you bringing things to me and me advising you on those things, not, 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 not in overreach. Uh, I think there's been kind of like an anti, you know, the shepherding movement was such a, a you know, there was good, good intention behind it. They saw the weakness of the church and wanted to, um, uh, to bring discipleship back, but they went way too far in, in the amount of, of influence and control that they had over the, uh, their sheep's lives, right? <laughs> their sheep's. <laughs> sheep, sheep, sheep uh, their flock's lives, their flock. right? Flock. <laughs> the lives of <laughs> the flock. Thank you, sheep's. Uh, but you can't throw the baby out of the bathwater because there's a real biblical call uh, to submit and, and obey uh, your authority. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. there's a healthy authority that needs to be uh, the, present in our lives uh, as worship leaders, as, as, as people. You know, yeah, absolutely. In, in general, yeah. um, and, and to not have that, um, you're really stunting your growth if you don't submit to that process. If you don't uh, be account, uh, if you're not accountable to somebody else, right? It reminds me of what Michael Jackson used to say: "It's all love." <laughs> you know, healthy accountability, and people, hey, what's you you okay? What's going on? Till Till does it to me all the time. Sure. You know, I'll be in a a funk or whatever. You all right? You know what's going on, and um, stuff like that. Healthy accountability will save your life, and it's always from a place of love. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, it's always from a place of, like uh, Jimmy's meeting with you that day. You know, that's like, that's like how you treat a son. Oh my gosh! You know, it's family. Yep. And I think that's a huge component of why Trinity Fellowship, <coughs> for the longest time, has been a really brilliant healing place because. In a healthy family, accountability is just part of the deal. Mm -hmm. um, but if you are unfamiliar with that kind of familial concept, it feels like control. It's absolutely. Especially if you've had negative oh, examples absolutely. of it in the past, and then someone's asking you, it's kind of like, 
hey, you really should get more involved, maybe find a mentor, you're like, uh, I don't know, mm -hmm. that's not a good idea to me, you know, I've had bad experiences in the past or whatever, uh, but it really is, honestly, like, like aside from, aside from the bylaws, I'm trying to think of, I really think it's the second most important way that we grow in Christlikeness is it's in some mm -hmm. sort of accountability or some sort of relational uh, uh, discipleship, and you know, the church is so important uh, for our growth as Christians, and it can really stun our growth if we choose to not submit to the process. Oh my gosh, man. Uh, Big time. And you can keep running around the same mountain. Uh, and as people, you know, confront you or try to hold you accountable and you choose to, to reject it and run, um, you're just going to keep running around that same mountain mm -hmm. until With that eventually point, you submit. I had a verse that came to mind. Um, you know, it says, a w the wise receive correction. You know, Proverbs says that that's the only category of people that receive correction right. are the wise, those that love wisdom. And it says, uh, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So, you know, on the other side of the coin, you know, the, the good, the great side of healthy accountability is love and, you know, but as, as people and leaders, you have to know, even as you approach people um, in love and say, hey, how you doing? What's going on? Or can we do this differently? Uh, they might show their teeth yes. and, you know, uh, but that we have to know, based on scripture, those two scriptures I just said, has nothing to do with us. Yeah. That's that's something that is off here, um, uh, uh, vertically, and um, you know, because the scriptures say the beginning of of wisdom is the fear of the Lord, and the wise are the ones who seek out and love um, and receive correction. Yes, yes. God, I mean, can you think about like I'm thinking about good examples of me being corrected, like musically specifically, and also bad examples. And I thank God that he, you know, sent people and men and women into my life that, that were like, don't do it like that. Yeah. Because <laughs> if I didn't, you know, I'd still be, I'd still be astray. I'd still be over here. Um, and it's such an important Oof. part of, of growth, such an important part of following Jesus is, is, <laughs> is having that healthy confrontation. Mm -hmm. um, if I'm not having some healthy confrontation with people, I kind of, I have to take a step back and be like, is there something, mm -hmm. am I not seeing something? I mean, not that I'm going around looking and like, hey, tell me something I can do better, you know, trying to, trying to um, beat myself up. But I think that there is, you know, if you're not receiving correction, if there's not things the Lord is convicting in your heart or people are bringing to you um, semi-regularly, it might be time to go and seek that out. Or maybe, you know, ask yourself, sure. am I submitted to somebody else who can actually speak to me open and honestly? Um, so... Just well, I would, I would encourage anybody that's listening to this to, to examine. Like, does anybody have that kind of access to your life? If you don't, this is a great opportunity. Find somebody that's near and dear to you. Find somebody that you respect. A really great way to approach that is, like, look around you. Yeah. Are there people in my life currently that I admire and I would love my life to look like in a handful of years? If those are people you can go to and be like, hey, these are some things. Because this is what's hard about it. The, the, the accountability portion is I have to approach you and say, I, I'm aware that I need some accountability in these areas. Mm -hmm. So you're already having to kind of open up and be vulnerable in that position. But anybody that you'd be approaching that's worth their salt is going to be like, oh, yeah, I've been there before. Sure. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, uh so we both of them been on both sides of it, right? Mm -hmm. Doesn't it give you joy whenever a younger man walks up to you and says, "Hey, will you help me yep. with this?" You're like, yeah. "You're like, Shh, absolutely." You know, it brings me joy to do it. Um, and I think the same is true whenever we go to uh, to older uh, saints and ask them the same, and not just older, but also peers sure. as well. Um, but yeah, it's such an important part, man. So I want to I want to I want to connect some practical things <laughs> along with these spiritual things. So we combined this idea of excellence and accountability. So let's talk through a very simple, practical way to open yourself up to accountability that doesn't feel like all of my insides are out on the table. So a, a way that you can do this is that if you're scheduled to play, you're scheduled to lead, whatever it is, there's a level of excellence that you want to hold yourself to. And the worship leader or other musicians are looking to hold you accountable to what you agreed to do. So if I'm playing lead guitar and we're playing three songs that have very definable lead guitar parts and those songs hinge on those guitar parts, the excellence that I'm being held to is I need to at least learn those parts. 
Will they be amazing? I'm going to do the best that I can. These are things internally that you can be holding yourself accountable to because it's not just other people that hold you accountable. You can hold yourself accountable. That's probably one of the most important ones. It's like you can't just throw it off on other people and be like, yeah, hold me accountable to that. And be like, well, what are you doing? <laughs> like, yeah, it's like, you know, I can't just be like, tell Katie, be like, man, make sure I don't ever eat that again. She's like, why don't you just remember? Because we have this conversation about <laughs> double jalapeno bacon cheeseburgers every single time. And I tell her every time, I'm like, hey, make sure I don't eat that again. She's like, hey, dummy, why don't you just not do that? <laughs> Will you be my Holy Spirit? <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, yeah, to really. this point, yeah. when you say, when you get a planning center request and you accept, and you hit the accept button, you have now just joined yep. a mini accountability group. Yep. Because you've joined the accountability group that says, I'm going to hold up my end of the bargain. If I'm playing bass, I'm going to know the bass parts. If I'm playing drums, I'm going to know the drum parts. If I walk in and I didn't do, I didn't hold up my end of the bargain, then it's my responsibility to approach those people and say, I'm sorry. I blew it. Now, I've been the one, and I've also been in settings where people are doing their best to convince me that they are prepared, and I know that you're not. You know, hey, someone just hit a weird note. What is that? And everyone's like, <laughs> oh god, they won't know. They won't fess that's up to tell, it. It's like that's the I sign. know it's you. <laughs> that's really interesting observation. That you're totally right. If somebody shows up prepared and they just make a goof or whatever, it's like. Oh, man. Sorry, that was me, man. I, I was thinking about my you know, lunch plans or whatever. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. Uh, and then, all right, on. And then you don't make a mistake again, but, but you can really tell. And uh, yeah, it, it's, always, it's always funny, like, like watching someone like fumble their way through a set, and afterwards they're like, man, I'm just having a hard time with that song. And then I'll ask them the question, well, how much did you, how much did you practice? You know? How much time did you spend on that song? Yep. Like, well, you know, I mean, uh, I mean kind of like you know, throwing all these qualifiers in there. It was a really busy week. And, you know, I mean... <laughs> I kind of listened to it on the way to church, you know what I mean? I'm like, well. well that <laughs> Meanwhile, they're right. playing jazz gigs. And you're like, mm -hmm. <laughs> sorry. Well, I've, really? I've had guys, I, had, I remember having lunch with a guy, this was probably 10 years ago, and his purpose for having lunch with me was, I want to be scheduled more, and I don't feel like the music that we're playing <laughs> is very challenging. Yet, week in and week out, he would show up when he was scheduled, he would show up unprepared oh, in those parts. There was this very strange chicken or egg conversation yeah. that we had to unpack where it was like, okay, hang on. I can't make the songs more challenging. It's worship music. But you can challenge yourself and hold yourself to a higher standard. Are you telling me now that if you were scheduled more and if the songs were more challenging, then you'd be more prepared? Because that's the same concept as saying, well, I'd be a better money manager if I had more money. No. <laughs> You're not paying rent on time. You're not paying bills on time with the limited amount of money that you do have. Right. What would make you think that you would be able to do more if you had more? So this concept of accountability is the opportunity is sitting in front of you to be accountable for small things. Did you say, husbands, if you're living at home, uh, if you're living at home, <laughs> Of course you are. <laughs> Husbands, Hopefully. at home, if you said, I'll take the trash out, take the trash out. If you're playing a set, hey, I'm going to show up prepared. Show up prepared. These are really simple, basic ways that we can start to own accountability before we start jumping into the, hey, will you be accountable for all the darkest interiors of my heart? You know, and no, also, no, there's nothing wrong with that. But these are, I'm trying to provide some practical ways of, okay, what's the shallow end of the pool to accountability? Because you don't want to just go to the deep end and go straight to your pastor and be like, here's everything I've ever done for the last year, and I don't know what to do. Right. Not, I'm not saying that you shouldn't do that. I'm just, I'm, I'm giving you a easy entry point into a yeah. complicated thing. Accountability <laughs> is not easy. When you approach somebody and you say, I want you to have access to my life, you have to be realizing what you're signing up for. When I tell Matt Spears, hey, I need help in my life. I need you to, to weigh in on these things. I have to be ready for him to say, what's going on with you and your wife? Oh, man, it's great. It's great. Okay. 
what's going on? I'm, I'm, let me ask it. Let me ask. Let me rephrase the question. How are you and your wife doing? Oh man, it's great. Fantastic. Okay. I didn't ask you to lunch. I didn't ask you to spend this time with me so that we could just only talk about the highlights. Have niceties. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. I want to talk about what's actually going on. Well, I screwed up. Okay, let's talk. That's that's the accountability. Is Matt again? Accountability is not Matt being a detective. It's not Matt's job to go digging around in my life and make, you know, finally pin me down and go, tell me, right, right. tell me what you've been doing. For sure. That's not what it is. For sure. <laughs> and so if he did that, you wouldn't get the same result out of it. You're like, like when you bring something voluntarily to the table, it's a whole different conversation than somebody forcing it out of you or like pinning you into submission or whatever. Um, so you had a question here that I think is really interesting and probably worth with chewing on a little bit. Um, how do you do it right? How do you have confrontation right? And what is worth addressing in, you know, in terms of like um, in a what excellence? Way? What's worth addressing in like a musical mm. standard standpoint? Uh, and of course, that's going to be different for every size sure. church and depending on how many, well, every, for, uh, for every person, really, honestly, like there's a lot of like factors, I think, to consider. Um, how do you do it right, though? Teal, what do you think? Uh, or Phil? Okay, I'd say this, this ties into what Teal was just saying, and Teal says this a lot, is first off, you know, musically speaking, um, if I can go back to being at home, I don't know what it is about males, but whenever we do something, we're like looking for like, <laughs> you know, and you, you should not be, like you say, getting applauded for just doing what you're supposed to be doing. Um, you know, you took out the trash. What do, you, what do you want your wife to do? Put a medal around your neck, you know? Um, and the same, it's the same with uh, weekend services and showing up prepared. No news is good news from leadership. If you're yeah. doing your job and you're holding it down, I mean, sure, you know, you'll probably hear a good job or that was great. But um, I think as, as far as like accountability and what we should be receiving, it should just be like almost next to nothing mm -hmm. if we're just doing our job. Um, Growth and maturity, I think, shows in the heart of a musician that I'm great with somebody giving me a high five, I'm, but I'm not living my day-to-day -day life needing that yeah. every single time. Big time, yeah. Right? Because I, I did. I used to approach gigs, and I would call them gigs, unfortunately. Like, I would approach them like a gig when I would play on the weekend in my early 20s. And what I was doing is I was spending all week working on my technique, and then I would come to service and I would do all the cool stuff that I had done. And then I was like looking around to see if anybody noticed. And I was like, you young, like this is not about you. Like, it's cool that you did that. <laughs> like, but you know what I'm saying? It's oh, like, absolutely. I'm, no. I was, I know it well. <laughs> I was doing the right thing for the wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. Not bad to be prepared, not bad to work hard at your craft, not bad to learn licks, not bad to like want to be a great musician. Not cool to do it so that you can receive accolades and receive pats on the back. That's not cool because then it's like, to your point, how, how much is enough? It, it never, you know, you keep going back to that well and it's like, there's, there's gotta be more water in here. Never know. There's gotta be, yeah. There's gotta, never, never. I'm gonna go learn this new Jocko Pastorius bass lick. Maybe someone will say something <laughs> to me. Just maybe they'll give me a chance in rehearsal. Hey, and, hey, and irony is like you do it and people are like, you please play less like stop it's not <laughs> it happened to me right it happened to me uh we were recording a, 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 a was one of our cds 2016 uh, just down the street and uh the producer came in and i was i was you know busy doing my nice um um <laughs> finger muting exercises and funk gig uh funk licks or whatever and we were playing songs that didn't need that so he goes i need you to play less then again i need you to play less still just play whole notes. <laughs> Stop playing the whoop -a boos He called them. Yeah, he called them whoop boos Boop a boom. <laughs> oh, Craig Alvin. So uh, that was a very like okay, well, but it changed the way that I played. Like from that moment forward, it was like you know what? Stop doing what, the boo -boo -boo. what am I doing? You know. So in that moment, I was kind of faced with like, why am I playing like this? It is so that people will recognize that I can play my instrument well, and if I am recognized that I can play my instrument well, I will be satisfied because that's my aim in life to be a studio bass player. And how, like, how far, I was, I was in the church, I was actively serving, I was, I was a part of the worship team for several years at this point, mm -hmm. but I had this idea in my head, and it kind of all came to a head in that moment. Uh, and it's just like the Lord to do something like that, to pull just this, this situational thing that kind of makes me step back and be like, 
why am I doing this? Well, and Craig didn't even realize my heart it. is kind of, yeah, you know, he's just making a... But he thing created a level of accountability. I'm asking you not to do that. And it revealed something in my heart of like, man, uh, maybe I've got a motive that's off here. And it, yeah. and it was, absolutely. And the accountability is all about serving others and serving the kingdom and serving the Lord. And there could be a setting you're in where musically the best way to serve that community and the expression of worship to Jesus is to shred and to go for it. But that's that moment. That's that part of the body of Christ. And they're all beautiful. But it's like, okay, my heart needs to be in every setting. Um, what about others? Yeah. <laughs> what about what God wants? For sure. You know, for sure. as a musician. Well, I mean, I, I even remember, like, well, even in that, like, for, for folks that shred, like, like someone like, a, you know, Leonard, for example, would be, you know, who, who can play really well. You know, he's not, he's not interested in, like, playing the coolest licks or whatever. He's just interested in, in glorifying God with his. He's mm-hmm. not interested in what people think necessarily. He's just up there playing it really well and, mm-hmm. and, and doing it for God's glory. Um, and I think that, you know, ultimately the reason that we're holding folks accountable to their level of excellence and uh, the reason that the, the Craig moment is so powerful for me was that it, uh, as I was confronted about my playing and my... Uh, lack of submission to what he was asking me to do, um, it kind of pointed to a deeper heart issue, which is usually what's going on whenever mm. we're asking a musician to show up on time, to come mm. prepared. It's something much deeper than just... The thing you, is not the thing. Yeah, absolutely, right? It's, mm-hmm. not the, it's not the thing. It's a character issue that God's wanting to yeah. bring to the surface and pull out of you because he wants to heal you, ultimately, right? He's not revealing it just to be mean or allowing yeah. you to go through this just to be mean. It's, it, it's actually for your healing. Uh, if you'll step into it and, and trust him, through other people, wow. mm-hmm. through other people, it's so right? True, man. Um, it's not just some you know voice in, during your prayer or quiet time that comes down to you and all of a sudden you receive it. It's it's very much like an active like um, leadership and, and people that are placed in your life strategically by the Lord um, to give you wisdom and counsel. I just had a thought with that. You know, you you know you're coming across you're crossing paths with healthy accountability when the uh, reason for the conversation and the desired result from whoever's holding you accountable is to grow the account itself. You know, you think of the parable of talents, the uh, five that becomes ten and, and the two that becomes four, and then, you know, the one who uh, didn't, didn't have any interest in, in growing his account. Uh, the, the heart of God is to see everything that we do and every part of our life grow and become the best it can be to, mm-hmm. to the abundant life. And you know you're, you're crossing paths with a healthy leader when that's what they're after. You know, because the, the word accountability, tucked in that word is count. You know, numbers, growth. Where, where are we at? There's a quantifiable measurement of, of what we're talking about here. And I want to see that increase, not decrease. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and the accountability, I think, is what uh, allows growth. I don't know if I've ever met anybody in my life that refuses to be accountable for their actions and continues growing in a healthy way. They're, they're synonymous. I mean, they yep. go hand in hand. Where yep. It's like all the people yep. that I've ever seen that submit themselves to accountability and are open to someone speaking into their life, they can't help but grow. All it's just the natural, yeah. it's like the law of the land. Mm-hmm. Um, it's the law of the Bible. But It really is, right? You know, let's have this written down along that same point. Of, <laughs> that's why we do of, it. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Because it's God's way. You know, that's how he, how he shapes his people and molds his people. Worship leaders, musicians, whatever mm-hmm. your gifting and talent is. Um, if you do this, if you submit and, 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 and undergrow the, uh, the pruning and the process, right? Uh, well, yeah. Joseph did it. David mm-hmm. did it. Moses did it. Daniel did it. They all submitted to someone else, uh, to another authority, and uh, Pastor Jimmy's mentioned this a couple a couple weeks ago in the in the uh, in the Authentic You series was uh, that they all served someone else's mission. Um, mm. So submission, like Mm-mm. they came underneath someone yeah. else's mission. Oh, that's so good. Them, that's um, literally what the word submission right, means. Coming under someone else's mission, yep. calling, supporting them, yep. and then God says, "Okay, you're ready. Yep. Now it's time for you to to step into your uh, the." F- of the fullness of your calling. You know, that was all, like, that yes. was still part of their calling to, uh, to serve under someone else for a period of time. Jethro, um, Pharaoh, uh, Nebuchadnezzar. Oh, all I thought bad you were going to say bosses. another one with an O at the end. <laughs> Jethro, Jethro, Pharaoh, Pharaoh uh, 
I can't think of another one. <laughs> well, there's the O. Oh, Sorry, I was stupid. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I have a question. King Solo. <laughs> With this, what are some of the results and things that happen when there is no accountability? You know, there's a lot of examples, I'm sure. What do you guys see happen with people's lives or with ministries or? I personally know, I mean, I, I know <coughs> my own life in those times early on when I was playing at the church, when I was not submitted to any accountability, playing at the church was a gig. I would mm. come in, I would do the bare minimum. I would do what I wanted to do, but I would do the bare minimum that was required of me. As soon as I was done, pack my stuff, I would arrange my stuff yep. so that I could be able to easily grab my gear, walk off stage, pack up and leave. I wouldn't even stay for service. <gasps> so here's, here's, now here's a huge component of this, and this is, this is I'm not, because we'll get into this eventually. Lack of accountability with, it, it removes you from community. Oh, that's so good. Say that again. The, 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 Say it again. The lack of accountability removes you from any kind of communal growth because what I was doing is uh. I refused to be accountable so that it wouldn't allow me to be in community with the people that were there. And there were some amazing people that were playing at that time, like some great people that wanted to pour into my life that probably wanted the best for me. And because my, you know, the, the death of my ego had not happened quite yet, um, all I cared about was me and accountability. That's ultimately what you're, you're, you're realizing is I'm not the most important thing. Uh, and if I keep functioning like this, no one's going to want to be around me. Right. No one's going to spend any time with me. Um, oh. and our walk with the Lord too. Oh. I mean, I, I'm just thinking about this as well. Don Potter says, this is that the gift of salvation is free, but the relationship with Christ costs you everything. Like that gift of salvation, getting in the family's free. Staying in the family costs you everything. That relationship with Christ is constantly every day the Lord saying, I'd like that to die. I'd like that to die. I'd like you to give that up. I'd like you to stop doing that. I want to talk about that. I want to talk about that. And any time that we come to a point and there's a crossroads with the Lord, and we're like, I don't want to talk about that. The Lord's like, that area can't grow. It's, it's the squirmy feeling. That area we cannot just... and will not grow because what you've basically said is I'm going to try my hardest to grow a plant in pitch black darkness. Yeah, it ain't happening. It's got to come out in the light in order for that thing to grow. So if I refuse to open up about my finances to anybody or I refuse to submit my finances to the Lord, and then I'm like, man, we can't ever freaking get to the end of the month without us, me and my wife, just blowing up about finances. Well, yeah, ding dong, you're trying to grow a plant in a closet with the lights off and a blanket on top of it. It's not going to happen. It's just not, it's not in the cards. So the, the invitation of having a relationship with Christ is ultimate submission. There's never a point when you're always sub-mission. It's always Christ's mission, and you're always sub. You're always underneath it. There's not a point where he's like, hey... What would you like to do? You have actually graduated beyond the <laughs> never, Great Commission. Never, never. <laughs> no longer are you called to make disciples. You're actually called to build your own kingdom. It's like, yes. no, it's no, like no. you've <laughs> submitted to me long enough. You now may build your own kingdom. But get out of here, Joker. <laughs> not doing that. Deal, I love what you said about uh, it's like light. That, you know, growing, living life without accountability, godly accountability is like growing a plant in the dark. Truly, godly and healthy accountability has always felt like sunshine mm -hmm. to my soul. Yep. Absolutely. And I'll tell you this, I know this is, like a, this is probably a, a darker, heavier part of this. I have seen multiple accounts where like notorious felons, people that are breaking the law, that are hiding it, running from the law, the greatest night of sleep they get is after they get caught. Finally. Isn't that crazy? That thing's out in the light. Right. No longer is it. Getting away with it does not, like that, the, the refusal to be accountable in your life to the Lord and also to other people. I'm not saying that you should be accountable to every person that just walks through the door. That's not healthy either. But there should be some people in your life that have the opportunity to come up to you and say, how are you doing? And you get one chance to go, I'm good, man. And then they look at you and they go, how are you doing? You're like, oh, it's not good. <laughs> like, you know, 
uh, me and Daniel Prophet, we have this, we have this kind of look to each other because we're very much in similar periods of life that I'll look at him and I'll say, are you good? And he knows what I mean. I'm not just shooting the bull. It's a look at, and he'll do the same thing to me. Are you good? And sometimes I'll look at him and be like, no, but I don't have time to talk about that right now. Will you call me in a little bit? Yeah, I'll call you. He'll call. What's going on? Oh, I think my life is falling apart. I don't know what I'm doing. My kids don't let, you know, it's, and then we get this opportunity where he's like, okay, how's this going? We talked about this a couple months ago. How's this going? What's going on here? Mm-hmm. Have you opened up about this to Katie? Mm-hmm. It's the accountability. Because then I've got to look at him and be like, I haven't done any of it. He's like, well, not sure what to tell you, buddy. <laughs> That's light, though. That's sunshine coming on to sunshine coming in. Your, your life. Marco does this brilliantly. Yeah. He'll text me regularly. Are you good? How's the, how are things going? And that's a, that's a part of accountability, too, that we don't talk about very often is the people who are up top in an organization or a department, they need to be checked in on, too, mm-hmm. in love. Yeah. Hey, hey, boss, are you good? <coughs> are you okay? They're, that's also uh, a form. And you, and you read it in, in Paul's writings where there's an exchange. You know, we were studying this in Romans 1 where he says, I'm longing to come to you to impart a spiritual gift to you so that you may be established. And in doing that, I'm also going to be encouraged and built mm-hmm. up, Paul would say. Yeah. So it's a, it's a two-way street. Well, definitely. Yeah. And accountability, I think, too, as we're kind of wrapping everything up, the thing that's so important for us to understand and overly communicate is accountability is not, gotcha, yeah. see, I knew you were up to no yeah. good. Now you're busted. Now you're going to get in trouble. Yeah. That's not what accountability is. Mm-hmm. That's psychotic. I don't know what that is. (laughs) Accountability is, hey, I would have a desire to grow. I have a desire to get better as a husband, as a father, Mm -hmm. as a person, Mm -hmm. as a boss. Like, I have a desire to get better at these things. I need help because I'm wrestling with this. Daniel, again, Daniel Prophet did this brilliantly well. He came to me because I just kept complaining about the same thing over and over again. And he came to me one time. This is just, if you know Daniel, you know how perfect this was, but how also like, like just like right, you know, like a little dagger. And he was like, hey, I think you need to consider your bedside manner. And I was like, what does that mean? He was like, the way you present things, the way that you approach people, your bedside manner matters. How you're pastoring people matters. If you're intense, because I, I can have, I can tend to be a bit intense. And when I was a music director, I was really wrestling with this because it was like the team felt this very overwhelming sense of excellence. Like we need to execute, 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 execute. But there was not very much relationship going on it's because I was so intense all the time. <laughs> and my bedside manner was not great. And it was Daniel's accountability of saying, maybe look at it, maybe think about it. And I started to kind of analyze it and started to think about, like, there's all of these people that are being held to a standard, but I've got no relational equity with them. They're just doing because they don't want to get in trouble. That's not good. Mm. That's, you know, not the funnest couple of days of really unpacking that and thinking about it, but it was true. I would rather that, I would rather come to terms with that and be accountable for it than continue walking blindly thinking, like, dude, I don't know why these people don't want to hang out. <laughs> nobody wants to go to lunch with me You're like yeah dude because you like are on a 10 all the time you gotta relax you know? <laughs> let it breathe let it breathe man so anyways that's I think that's the overarching thing is that mm. you know accountability is based in relationship oh this is something else I was going to say if you're a worship leader if you're in a band and you're wanting and desiring to go a step further in accountability with people on your team, start with the shallow end of the pool of, hey, that's a really cool part. What is that? Oh, that's cool. Is that what's on the record? No, I just made it up. Oh, that's super cool. Do you think that you could play the part on the record and then we maybe figure out a way to work that other part in? Yeah, Yeah, I can do that. That's accountability. In reality, what the person was saying is... With good bedside manner. I don't... Yeah, good bedside manner. I don't... That's not what we talked about. That's not the part from the record. 
that's not adding to the song. <laughs> Will you please play the original parts? You could approach that one way, run people off in a second, which is what I've done many, many times. What's on the record? Play what's on the record. I don't care about what you came up with. Play what's on the record. There's also the other side of the coin that's just not doing anything, not, not saying, saying anything. anything. Yeah. You're like, well, I don't want to, really don't like confrontation. I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> yeah. That's not good. No, it's not. That's, that's not, not, that doesn't grow anybody. That's not so. healthy either. No, <laughs> that's not healthy either. It's just like, well, I, yeah, I really hate confrontation, so I'm not going to say anything. I'm just not going to, yeah, I'm not going to address that part that was, that was yeah. really distracting. It's a terrible yeah. part. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. I mean, we need both for sure. And, and, and also, too, this comes up sometimes of where, um, Maybe uh, somebody that I've asked to, uh, to play a part or play an instrument on a weekend service, uh, it, it might be, you know, I've, I've talked to them a couple times about being prepared and they're still not showing up prepared. Like maybe I overestimated the mm -hmm. skill level as well. So we kind of have to go back to sure. uh, not holding you accountable necessarily, but maybe I put you in too soon. Yeah. Let's reevaluate you know, where you're at and we'll uh, put you where, we, uh, so nice. where you need to go. But uh, you know what that is? I'm so glad that you mentioned that. You as the leader are accountable yep. for your choices. Yeah. This is not just a like younger people to older people or inexperienced people to experienced people. This is a accountability. Uh -huh. Providing it is also willing to be have it given to you. If I'm going to provide accountability for someone else, I need other people giving like yeah. pouring into me and asking me to be accountable. So it's a 360 experience that. In saying that, of like, I'm trying to hold you accountable, I've got to also be accountable for, is this the right fit? Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, I tried to force the issue here. I heard like, you play yeah. here, and it sounded really great. And I've done that. I've rushed people in. Like, they killed it at a Generations venue. And I'm like, that's awesome. Come do that in the weekend. Well, they're scared to death. They, like, they just were, like, getting their feet underneath them, yeah. Generations. And then I'm like, <laughs> do it in the big round room. It'll be awesome. And they're like, I'm scared to death. <laughs> right, I right, can't right, breathe. Different deal than that. Uh, and I peed my pants. So. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Yeah, yes. then, then owning it, you know. Yeah, like, yeah. Hey, I'm so sorry. I, like, I put, it, you know, put you in here too soon. Uh, let's take a step back. And um, usually they receive it well if you come to them. Absolutely. With, with a. Uh, man, I made a mistake. I'm, I'm so sorry. I, I rushed in this, and I think it'd be better fit if you uh, served in this venue for a while. And we'll touch base every couple months and uh, kind of play it from there. But I love it. Well, before we wrap up, is there anything else? Any other thoughts you guys have? This has been it's a really that's good all I concept. got. So, very, very much uh, enjoyed so this. Good. And there's depth to this. I would say that this is you know we're introducing the beginning layers of accountability. Uh, it's important to continue pressing in, asking the Holy Spirit help help me to understand how. I can give accountability to other people and help me be receptive to accountability. Mm -hmm. um, so as always, we're really thankful that you joined us for this hour today. We've had a lot of fun. We've enjoyed this. As always, we are the worship team of Trinity Fellowship. If you're looking for a home church, you're looking for a community to be, to be a part of, please go check out tfc.org. We have physical campuses. We have an awesome online campus, but we would love to have you join our team if you're a musician or a vocalist or worship leader and you're looking for a place to get plugged in, hi, we'd love to have you. Uh, we would love to have you on our team, have you be a part of what we're doing. Um, thank you, fellas. Thank you, Talon, behind the behind the, uh, the screen here, doing all the things to make this thing look so natural and carefree and enjoyable. Uh, he's the man. He's the man. Producer Talon, we appreciate you. So until we see you the next time, thank you for joining us, and we will see you at the next one.